Kogi State came into being as a result of a state creation exercise on the 27th of August 1991. With the administrative headquarters in Lokoja, the creation of the state was indeed a significant development for its citizens. This is because it brought about the reunion of a people who had shared historical roots and coexisted peacefully with the former Kaba province in the defunct northern region for more than 80 years. The state, which is structured into 21 local government areas, comprises of three major ethnic groups, that is Igala, Ebira, Onokun, Yoruba, Kogi State has an average maximum temperature of 33.2 degrees Celsius, an average minimum of 28.8 degrees Celsius. Lokoja, the state capital, is generally hot throughout the year. The state has two distinct weather, dry season, which lasts from November to February, and rain season that lasts from March to October. Annual rainfall ranges from 1,016 mm to 1,524 mm. The vegetation of the state consists of mixed woodland to forest savanna, wide expanse of Fadama in the river basin and long stretches of tropical forests in the western and southern belt of the state. Yahya Bello is a Nigerian politician, businessman and the current governor of Kogi State. Yahya Bello ascended the leadership throne of the state by January 2016. In his inaugural speech, he opinionatedly made it known that his administration will reposition the state to better height an envious one. What this program is about is to try and impact on the people, the vulnerable in the society, and the small savers for the SME, SME program, and what we call, uh, for instance, we have the conditional cash transfer program, which is a program designed to give 5,000 Naira to beneficiaries who are considered to be extremely poor in the society. When this administration came in, we had a, blu a blueprint that talked on five thematic areas. Infrastructure and utility, education, agriculture, civil service reform, and health services. My own area of concentration is infrastructure and utilities. This administration awarded various projects across Kogi State. Starting from Kogi Central, which is the area in Okene, Adave, and Okehi, Ajakuta, and Ogurimagungo, we have three major projects going on presently. The Agasa Upoguro Spur Auchi Bypass is a project that was initiated to take care of the traffic coming from Lagos through the town towards East and Bini area. Normally during the festive period, we normally have green lock in Okene town at the total filling station. His Excellency Alhajiyaya Adoza Bello did me fit to provide this alternative route to the congest traffic inside the town. The project is about 10.5 kilometers and we are at 60% completion now. The other project in the central is Itakwe, Eika, Okene, and Ogamnana Spore Total Filling Station. This project is about 23 kilometers and we are about 40% completion. 
The third one is Obehira Ihima Spo Obangede. It's also about 25 kilometer road. We're about 30% completion now. These are the projects in the central. In the east, we have Opo Ogugu and in Olama Boro local government. This is about 23 kilometer road and we are almost 70% at completion. Then we have Ampa Abejikolo Road, which is about 54 km. It's about 30% completion is ongoing. Then we have Shintaku Boloko Road in Basaloka Government. It's also about 25% completion is ongoing. We have Ida in Ibaji, Ibaji area. This one is about 54 km and the work is ongoing. When this road is completed, it will link Kogi State with Inugu and also Anambra because Ibajira borders Inugu and Anambra at the eastern axis. In the western senatorial district, we have Isanlu Ife Oluko to Iamoe Road. It's about 73 km road, the longest project. It is about 40 km, I mean 40% 40 completion. Governor Yahya Bello vowed to make agriculture a business concern, noting that the policy thrusts of the administration on agriculture is to produce food and ensure food security for the people of the state, its neighboring states, and Nigeria at large. On the assumption of Office of His Excellency Elijah Yahya on 20, uh, 27 January 2016, he met uh, the agricultural sector that was comatose. The crowd center that was dilapid, nothing was working in the Greek. And really it came and made it very clear that it was, his priority would be agriculture. And started marching action with wars. We started by organizing a, what we call a, a stakeholders meeting where all the issues bedeviling agriculture were thoroughly trashed and decisions taken. And we immediately went to field, to work. We started with the Anchor Brewers program, we immediately keyed into Anchor Brewers program in 2016 by engaging 1,888 uh, co guys in rice farming. At the same time, His Excellency made money available for procurement of uh, tractors and other implements. We got 40 brand new tractors and other farm implements like harvester, planters, uh, seed and so many other ones. We injected that into the agricultural space and that has really boosted the, our productivity in the state. We noticed that we are doing very well in rice production, but all the paddy rice were being taken to other states for milling and they named them after those states. So it's as if we're not doing anything in agriculture. So Excellency immediately, uh, immediately directed that we set up a rice mill factory in Omi, that's in Yagba West local government. And we commenced operation on 50 tons per day rice meal. We also cultivated 1,000 hectares of uh, rice plantation in Omi to, to serve the rice meal that has been uh, constructed. And I'm sure the rice meal will be ready for commission by September this year. We're almost through with it. Work is an advanced uh, stage. We also set up a greenhouse farm in Osara. Greenhouse farm is a, a modern way of cultivating vegetables. And the reason why we went into this is very simple. Because of our location in Kogi, we are just at the heart of Nigeria. We are bounded by 10 states and FCT. I wonder that we can create a vegetable hub in Kogi so that we can bridge the gap between the north and the south. Rather than leave Lagos for my degree to go and buy vegetable, we want to shorten the journey and make our people buy those things from uh, Kogi. We have started the harvesting tomato, uh, poepe and cucumber from a greenhouse farm. And we are using that as a training ground for so many farmers. We are training people on modern way of cultivating uh, uh, vegetables. 
This year, we have just enrolled 4,800 Naira rice farmers in our under anchor growers program. We have given inputs that is required, and they are on the farm now. All these are geared towards uh, engaging our people and producing enough paddy to fill the rice mill, which will be sold to Kogais and Nigerians at large. We're also keyed into AEDs, that's Accelerated Agricultural Development Scheme of Federal Government. We have constructed 600 fish ponds across the state for youth. And we intend to engage at least 1,200 youth under this scheme. We, have, we are done with the construction. We are procuring the inputs now. And in under one or two weeks, youths will be put into this, uh, these uh, facilities to start their production. Fadama in 2017 engaged over 7,000 Kogais, as in we, we provided jobs for over 7,000 people. And we have started also collating names now for dry season and Coburas program, that's under uh, dry season rice farmers under Coburas program. We are targeting 10,000 for the dry season. The refund and coverage program has provided you for over 12,000 rice farmers. A lot of programs are ongoing in Agri, and all these are geared towards uh, one, providing jobs for people, food security, and reducing crime in our community. The ministry itself is being overhauled. We now have pilot farms everywhere, even within the ministry, where we train uh, people on sewers youth coppers and youths that are interested in various forms of I mean, types of uh, agriculture. All of these have taken place within two years of His Excellency's uh, uh, reign in agriculture. He is seen as Nigeria's youngest governor, who in the last two years has increased the state's IGR from 400 million naira to more than a billion naira monthly. The governor, amongst other feats, provided an SDG office built in Lokoja and under the SDG program, many primary health care centers have been renovated and remodeled. Ambulances, hospital equipment were purchased and distributed to general hospitals accordingly. So this is the Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program Office. It is the JEEP program, which we also call the Money Market. This is where we facilitate loans of about 50,000 Naira each to beneficiaries, small, small traders and indigents. Most of the people on our uh, conditional cash transfer, once they have been able to establish themselves into cooperatives, we also move them into the JEEP program to be able to benefit so from the 55,000 they are getting from the federal government and they start small business, then we can facilitate a Jeep loan for them and other small traders in the marketplace and not even some of the Empower pro, uh, beneficiaries who are benefiting from uh, business efforts on their own, we also assist them to facilitate loans from the Bank of Industry uh, through the federal government social investment program. It's going to impact positively on their lives because even with the existing ones, beneficiaries that we have, it is um, evident from the beneficiaries, from the testimonies that we get from them, that even the ones they have collected in the pact has really uplifted their status. Like, you will recall, sir, that uh, last month, or about two months ago, we went in Ogaine One community in the Baji local government area. The women of that community, that's the beneficiary of the cash transfer program, they decided to be contributing the money they were being paid. Not everything, but at least out of it. They contributed money and they have dug a well in that community because they have identified that water was, has been a serious problem for that community. We in Kogi State, we are running the social investment program the same way the federal government has itemized and detailed us to do the program. The sole aim of the social investment program is to alleviate and to uplift the people from poverty, uh, from their poverty level. Now, one of the programs that has actually 
impacted the most as we speak is the program we call the Empower. The Empower is an empowerment program for youths in Nigeria. The Empower program helps youths who are hitherto unemployed to gain temporary employment in areas of teaching, in areas of agriculture, which we call Enagro. The teaching program is called the N-Teach, and we have what we call the N-Health. The N-Health, the beneficiaries are sent to various primary health care centers in uh, Kogi State to help with the implementation of the primary health care policy in Nigeria. Governor Yaya Bello has also been working tirelessly in reforming and ensuring quality education and the welfare of school children in the state. Uh, particularly for the year 2018, his, um, and uh, the education sector has uh, been quite very interesting. Uh, because when, uh, when you look at the annual records you have in Nigeria, Kogi State seem not to have received adequate attention in terms of available data, in terms of um, the prevalent issues. So there seem to be a whole lot that is not known about Kogi State. Um, for starters, the Kogi State government, um, it's about 27 years old now. We are approaching the 28th year of statehood. And if you look around in Kogi State, the infrastructural deficit is alarming. And uh, that's the first thing people see, that we have uh, deplorable standards, particularly in terms of the infrastructure in school, the learning environment, and that has gone to a very alarming um, level of, uh, of, this, of gross neglect over the years. In terms of funding for the sector, um, not much seems to have been known in the past, other than um, if I'm to quote Action Aid very well, funding in the sector never achieved, in terms of budgetary provision, it never achieved uh, double digits until His Excellency Governor Yahya Bello resumed office. Then again, when you do look at, you find around the state, windstorm have had more than their fair share of um, damage to the school buildings dating as far back of 1994, 2002, 2012, and all of these and most of them have gone unarrested. But then the interesting thing about the Kogi State is um, Kogi State in terms of secondary education have 285 grant aided schools community schools which have been taken over by government and then for those ones government provides different levels of intervention, um, staffing is provided. Uh, oftentimes you find again um, interventions in infrastructure and because uh, community groups and social groups and a whole lot of other groups have dumped their responsibilities in what you would have called government schools today, you would find that the inferior standards that um, some of those schools were constructed with become some of the challenges that His Excellency Governor Yahya Bello inherited. Uh, on the issue of, um, there's the formal education and there's the non-formal education. And the government, like I did say, is partnering very closely with the federal government. And we're following every trend at that level. And we're doing the best we can to ensure that we are able to domesticate some of these uh, strong points at the state level. Um, just recently, the technical vocational education and training was launched there as an intentional strategy of government to bring in all those in the non-formal education sector, all the artisans out there, the certification of them. And the state is working very well with the National Business Technical uh, Examination Board as well as the Federal Ministry to see how much of that the government will do. For instance, we've conducted an assessment of the government technical colleges. Kogi State has four government technical colleges which are not well... Um, the standard actually is that you should have... Um, one technical college per local government. And part of what His Excellency Governor Yahya Bello is working on right now is to see how we could put a technical college, uh, a functional technical college in, that, uh, in each local government area in the state. For that to be possible, you'll find that on the average, government would need to pay attention 
to uh, secondary education. Um, as you are aware, and as you may be aware, is that secondary education is one site that has been offered in the whole arrangement. Our federal government provides counterpart intervention for tertiary education, provides um, support for basic education, as through UBEC, but there is no support, there is no commission, there is no board for secondary education. And secondary education is left majorly to the state government. And then the government technical colleges fall within that. And this is the new phase of education management in Kogi State. Um, for the first time, the state is analyzing its exam processes itself. Here you find um, civil servants taking responsibility and ownership for managing the exam records as you have them here. So by this you find that all student information across the state are going online and this will be played out. Um, how is this important? Because His Excellency during his second, um, the second year anniversary convened an education um, an education summit for all stakeholders. Uh, there we have um, 1,001 individuals, stakeholders from all walks of life. They met with the government and then we got feedback from them and they were able to tell government what was working and what was not working. And part of what we did was we created, we came up with a document we call the agenda, the next two year agenda for what government would like to see. And this development is part of the feedback we got from government. Uh, putting in place, number one, the structures, for government to be able to bring about credible data and for that to happen then the education management information uh, system unit would have to function. So now we are collating all data from across the sector and then we are also addressing some of the issues. So it's important to note that when this process is completed you could sit anywhere in the world you could Google Kogi State Ministry of Education and then you would be able to find all the data you need across all the sectors, the number of schools, the number of teachers, the number of population of students per class, the location of those schools, what intervention government would have to do, the learning environment, and then of course the performance appraisal for all the students as they are going. This also puts government in a better position to inform how much of government funding should go to what area of that. And for that, I would like to say congratulations to His Excellency Governor Yahya Bendo for paying attention to the subtle things that make education um, successful.